Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta. And today we are going to understand how to run mixed linear models in SPSS. Linear mixed effects models are a type of a statistical model used to analyze the data that involve both fixed effects and random effects. These models are particularly useful when dealing with the hierarchical order grouped data where the observations are not independent but instead are nested within the higher level units. There are two components of linear mixed models. The first one is fixed effect and the second one is random effects. Fixed effects. Fixed effects are the variables or factors in a model where the levels are specifically of interest and the researcher wants to make inferences about this particular levels. The effects are considered constant across different samples. Random effects. Random effects are variables or factors where the levels are considered as a random sample from a larger population. The interest is in the variability among these levels rather than the specific levels themselves. Now let's try to understand this concept with the help of the case study. A research team is interested in evaluating the effectiveness of two different teaching methods, method A and method B, on student performance measured by their scores. The study involves different school types which includes public and private schools to assess how teaching methods perform across various educational environments. So these are the students uh, which, which we have picked up from different schools. Now there can be uh, two types of variations. The first one is uh, because of the assignable cost and the second one is because of the chance cost. So the variation in the performance of student scores can be divided into two parts, assignable cause and chance cause. Now what is the difference in this two? Let's understand. Assignable cause. So they are identifiable and specific sources of variations are known. Chance causes, random and inherent variability is there. Impact, significant impact is there. Is there often causing noticeable deviations. Chance causes small, typically within the expected range. Predictability, predictable once identified. Chance causes unpredictable. Some examples of assignable causes. Mistakes made by the operators, such as incorrect, incorrect settings on a machine. Chance causes minor fluctuations in temperature or humidity affecting the production process. Now let's understand random and fixed effects on the basis of assignable and chance causes. Assignable cause, teaching method A, teaching method B. In case of assignable cause, variation in the performance of the student measured by marks can be explained by the method of teaching, why there is variation. So this is known as a fixed effects model. So now the students, uh, those, who, those who have been exposed to teaching method A and the other students, those who have been exposed to teaching method B, definitely there will be variation in it. So you want to capture this variation, this is known as a fixed effects model. This side, in case of chance causes, variation in the performance of the students measured by marks can be explained by how sampling is being done. Every time, sample drawn from the population will have a different estimates. Treating school as random effects helps generalize findings to a larger population by considering natural variations. Fixed effects. So now they are known as a fixed effects. Assignable causes. Fixed effects. In a study focusing on a specific teaching method such as method A or method B, the teaching methods are tre treated as fixed effects. This approach aims to determine the impact of each method on student performance and to compare their effects directly. Random effects. If the study involves data from multiple schools and aim to, aims to understand how much of the variation in the student performance can be attributed to the differences between school, then the school will be treated as a random effect. So this is the original OLS equation. Now the error term. 
gets split into two parts. This eta gets divided into mu and epsilon. So the first part captures the fixed effects. The second part captures the random effects. So this two, teaching method A, teaching method B, so this is fixed effects. And this one is because of the sampling. So here error term, eta ij gets splits into two parts. Mu j is the error term which captures the randomness, this one of sampling known as a random effect. Mu j is a random error term with the mean value of zero and variance sigma square. So you can see here, mu j captures cross-section heterogeneity arising due to the sampling, private school and public school. And eij is a normal OLS error. Layman example of fixed effects and random effects. Fixed effects. Imagine you are a part of science fair project where you want to see if watering plants with a special fertilizer makes them grow taller or not. Fixed effects are like saying, on an average, plants that get special fertilizer grow taller than those that don't. This means that you are looking at the overall effect of the fertilizer on plant growth, no matter where the plants are or who is taking care of them. Fixed effects. Random effect. Now imagine that you and your friends are are each growing plants in different location, your backyard, your friend's backyard and the school garden. Each location might have a different amounts of sunlight, soil quality or other factors that could affect plant growth. So random effects are like saying the plants in each location might grow differently because of unique conditions in that location. So even though you are testing the effect of fertilizer, you also need to consider that the plants might grow better or worse depending on where they are planted. So this is known as a random effects. Assumptions of linear mixed models are first one, linearity. The relationship between the dependent variable and the fixed effects is assumed to be linear. This means that the effect of the predictor variable on the outcome is additive and proportional. Independence. The residual within each group are assumed to be independent. This means that the errors are not correlated with each other within groups. Homoscedasticity. The residuals are assumed to have a constant variance. This means that the spread of the residuals is consistent across all the levels of the predictor variables. Normality of the residuals. The residuals are assumed to be normally distributed. This assumption is important for hypothesis testing and construct in constructing confidence intervals. Normality of random effects. The random effects are assumed to be normally distributed. This means that the deviation of the group's specific intercepts from the overall intercepts follow the normal distribution. Random effect structure. The random effects should be appropriately specified. This involves correctly identifying the grouping structure, that is example students within classes, and specifying which effects, that is intercepts and slopes, are followed to vary, are allowed to vary randomly. No perfect multicollinearity. The fixed effects should not be perfectly correlated with each other. Perfect multicollinearity can make it difficult to estimate the unique contribution of each predictor. Sufficient data. There should be enough data at each level of the hierarchy, that is enough students per class, to reliably estimate the random effects. Sparse data can lead to unreliable results. Now let's see one case study. This we want to solve in SPSS. Let's consider a case study where we are interested in analyzing the effect of training program on test scores. We have 20 observations with students nested within the different class. The fixed effects could be the training program. So here is your training program. Binary, zero per control and one for treated. And the random effect is factor with the levels indicating classes. So this is the random effect, A, B, C. And we are having one more variable, gender and the test score. So let's see how we can run this in SPSS. So this is the same data, you can see. Now to run the linear mixed models, we will go in mixed models, linear, so what it says click continue for models with uncorrelated terms we are not sure therefore we will directly click on continue and 
transfer test score in the dependent variable continuous transfer class into factor gender into factor training into the factor now see this is the random effect which we want to consider and this are fixed effects these two are fixed effects so click on fixed uh, select gender and training multiple selections of the variable can be done with the help of shift button now press add so you will get all the combinations that is the gender main effect training main effect and their interaction gender into training if there is one more term it will take all the comp all the permutations and combinations which are possible now continue make sure type 3 is on continue click on random uh, activate class add continue estimation uh, that's fine so don't make any change here click continue statistics descriptive statistics and parameter estimates for fixed effects click on it continue estimated marginal means transfer all of them display means for activate compare main effects and in this we activate bond ferroni so we assume that there, there is there may be the possibility of type 1 error rate so bond ferroni is better so continue in save you put, uh, nothing to the no change uh, don't do any change in save like okay so you got the descriptive statistics so we'll start first with uh, fixed effects type 3 uh, type 3 uh, interpretation is to be done so uh, simply I will copy this Now just see the p-value of gender it's less than 0 0.05 training less than 0 0.05 and gender into the training that's the interact sometime it's more than 0 0.05 now we'll write the interpretation the effect of gender on test score is statistically significant this means that there is a significant difference in test scores between the gender between different gender the effect of training on test score is highly significant. This indicates that the different levels or type of training have a significant impact on test scores. Uh, the interaction between the gender and training is not statistically significant. This suggests that the effect of training on test scores does not significantly differ between the genders. Now uh, we will do the pairwise comparison but before that if you want the estimates of fixed effects you can get it from here pairwise comparison so here is it pairwise comparison see we found the difference in the test score according to the male and female so we want to find out that which gender is doing better so i'll copy this and let's do the interpretation so the mean score of the female minus mean score of the male the difference is 1.8 and its p-value is less than 0 0.05 what is our interpretation as the p-value of the difference in mean test scores for male and female is less than 0 0.05 so we can say that the difference is significant the mean test of female is significantly higher than males the mean test score of females is significantly higher than males by 1.8 so you can see here the difference okay next is is there any significant difference in the training so here is it okay i'll copy it here the same table so the control group is those students on which uh, uh which did not got the training and treated are those students which got the training so the mean of uh, mean scores of the students uh, who were in the control group mean scores of the students who were in the treated group the difference is minus 9.8 it means that those students who have got the training their mean scores are higher p-value less than 0 0.05 so it is the difference is significant also so i will write the interpretation as the p-value of the difference in the mean test score for control and treated group is less than 0 0.05 
So we can say that the difference is significant. The mean test score for the control group is 9.8, 9.8 points lower than for the treated group, indicating a significant impact of training on test scores. Now there are some other tables also which we, which I can get from here. So female control group treated, how much is the mean male control treated? Class A, then Class B, Class C, Class D. This is these are the mean scores. What is the conclusion of the study? The study aimed to investigate the effects of gender and training on test scores utilizing a mixed linear model based on the analysis. Several key findings are here. The first one, the training product program had a significant effect on test scores. Participants who received training scored on an average 9.8 9 points higher than those in the control group. This demonstrates the effectiveness of the training in improving test performance. Effect of gender. Gender also significantly affected test score with females scoring on average 1.8 points higher than males. This suggests that the gender differences exist in test performance with females outperforming males in this study. Interaction between gender and training. The interaction between gender and training was not statistically significant, indicating that the effect of training on test score was consistent across gender. In other words, both male and female benefited equally from the training programs. Fixed and random effects. By treating school as random effects, the study accounted for the variability due to chance, the chance factor such as difference, differences between the samples, sampled schools. This approach enhances the generalizability of the findings to a larger population. Manager implications of the study. The significant improvement in test scores due to training highlights the importance of investing in well-designed training programs. Educational institutes should allocate resources to develop and implement effective training initiatives to enhance students' performance. Gender sensitive approaches with females outperforming males, it is essential to recognize and address potential gender differences in learning and performance. Tailored interventions that support both genders can help bridge any gap and ensure that all students benefit equally from educational programs. By treating schools as random effects, the study accounted for the variability across different groups. This approach suggests that the findings are likely generalizable to a broader population of schools. Education managers should consider implementing similar training programs across various institutions to achieve widespread improvements in student performance. So this was all about linear mixed models in SPSS. For more videos on advanced data analysis using SPSS, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can also refer my playlist in which I have uploaded videos on data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Please don't forget to like and share my videos. You can also follow me on different social media as the link given in the description box.